Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about using your iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. I guess it's, for me, it's mostly, well, it's a combination of things. Um, in terms of stuff I track manually, I guess it's lots of health and fitness stuff, um, but also some automation. So I have a, automations around the workouts tracker on the watch, so that can be used to kick off a shortcut. Also visiting places, so... Uh, if you, that's another trigger in automations. So a lot of this goes on without me really touching it. Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Apple Pros. I'm thrilled to be joined this week by Rebecca Owen, the developer behind the awesome app Chronicling that was just updated for iPad OS 18 and all the other OS updates that just hit. In this episode, we'll be diving into how Rebecca uses the iPad and dive deep into Chronicling. So if you haven't downloaded Chronicling yet, Download it right now for free and follow along at home as we dive into this awesome app. As a reminder, you can get episodes early and support the podcast over at patreon.com slash iPadPros or by subscribing in Apple Podcasts. By supporting this show, you'll get both iPad Pros and Vision Pros early. My great thanks to everyone that supports the show. And as another reminder, if you have not yet reviewed this podcast in Apple Podcasts, That too would be greatly appreciated. Every review goes a long way in helping others discover the show. With that, here's my interview with Rebecca, all about chronicling. Enjoy. Welcome to the podcast, Rebecca. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, I came across your app a while ago, and it's been far too long since I've actually invited you on the podcast to talk about chronicling. But before we get to that, can you share a bit about your background? Uh, Sure. So uh, these days I'm a part-time kind of day job software engineer, Um, not in iOS world, but something completely different. Uh, And um, the rest of the week I'm I'm mum to my to my little one. So uh, and then evenings and whenever um, he's asleep, I guess uh, is when I work on chronicling, um, which is uh, my my indie app for well most Apple platforms, but not natively on Mac. But that's the only exception. Yeah. What's your uh, current iPad setup these days? Uh, So my current iPad is a, I looked this up to be precise, it's the 2020 iPad Pro 11 inch. So it's just before they went to the M series chips, um, which was at the time I felt very frustrated by this, but I've actually not found a good reason yet to upgrade. So it's the last A series chip um, in the, I think it's the second gen. Nice. Yeah, Yeah. that's still, still doing just fine for me. Yeah, Apple got me that generation two with the Magic Keyboard that came out. It's like I, yeah. I was not interested <laughs> in the flat side thing, but that Magic Keyboard with trackpad, that's how I could che- use my iPad differently from the other one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I think before that I had the I had a I had to I had an iPad Pro before that. I guess it might have been the first iPad Pro that came out, like twenty fifteen ish. Um yep. and that was starting to um slow down, show its show its age a bit. So uh yeah, that's why I upgraded then. Yeah, nice. And uh, what role does the iPad kind of serve in your life these days? Uh, I guess now it's it's the thing I like to go to first. So I also have a 13-inch MacBook, which um, it sometimes feels silly because they're basically the same size almost. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so carrying both of them feels a bit redundant. But um, I like to use the iPad if it's possible to. So the MacBook's kind of reserved for coding Um and yeah, so it's basically an Xcode machine, ideally. And the iPad is the thing I'd go to for things like um, anything administrative, emails, um, reminders, that kind of stuff. But also anything more fun or creative, I try and use the iPad first and foremost. And it, it's the thing that goes in the bag first, I guess, um, beyond um, other things. Yeah. Is the Apple Pencil uh, a tool you use at all? Yeah, so I have the Magic Keyboard and the and the second gen, I guess, Apple Pencil, i.e. the one that doesn't have the odd charging setup. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sticks on the side. Uh, I'm not the most creative person. I wish I was more, but I do like to use it for things like brainstorming and kind of freeform is my mm-hmm. first go-to uh, place for a new new idea or just kind of wanting to sit down and scribble about something. It will start with the pencil and freeform, I guess. Yeah. And then what about the iPad itself, like the platform and form factor? Do you like, like, why why do you use it versus that, that MacBook's and that's in the bag as well? Um, 
I guess I've always used it because it provides a degree of focus, I think, that is hard to achieve on the Mac. Like, I almost like the friction with the very small friction with multitasking compared to um, the ease on a Mac of having 10 things on your screen at any given time. So, (laughs) um, I've, so I had. I did a PhD before I became a software engineer and, and back then I'd try and do as much of my writing or um, as much of the kind of graphs and visualizations editing as possible on the iPad because I just found it so much easier to focus and you can easily go outside, like go write in the park or whatever and change context a bit. So Yeah. Uh, so in our house, the iPad is a smash in case of emergency kind of device sometimes uh, <laughs> when our child is sick so like yep. <laughs> uh, nothing else not nothing else but you know miss rachel will, will you know call calm her down it, at 3 it does become but, the vehicle the car uh watching device quite a lot yeah then. yeah <laughs> so, so that, is, that, that has happened at least couple of, yeah it's funny like yesterday we were just playing she, it's like i gotta okay she was she saw us i need to hide this device because she like is, can associate oh i i let me uh, we have the the big one liner that she'll know as well. She'll like try carrying it and open it up. Like, can, can we? no, 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 not happening. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, it has a weird association now. So, yeah. It does, yeah, and uh, yeah. I love also just taking off the iPad from the um, Magic Keyboard and just letting her, you know, play with it because like it's not Bluetooth, it's not paired with anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I did find for a while I was. Um, I found myself not using it enough for things like I wanted to read more on it, but I always find that the magic keyboard almost makes you treat it like a laptop. So for a while I had a slimmer case for it, but then I ended up going back to the magic keyboard and I have these weird two little loops on the side of it, just these budget elastic loops that I stash the pencil in. So it's got somewhere safe to live when I throw it in a bag or whatever. So yeah, um, I've, lost a pencil for like five days and then it turned up again so i ended up with two <laughs> yes. kind of thing and yeah, yeah i i it's funny people make fun of the old apple pencil but they sold a little folio that you could put everything in very nicely and i miss those days of the little folio that had a pencil slot and then you know it's, this is great I imagine that might be, I don't know, I've, I've not yet splashed out on a polishing cloth, but I suspect that that wasn't cheap. <laughs> oh, it was like one of those $150 folios, but yeah. <laughs> it felt, it feels so good. It, it was like the leather one, so it's like a nice surface nice. to like put your iPad on the table if you're at like a dirty coffee shop, you just put your iPad there and it just feels nice to hold. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it was. It's. I think Apple still sells these for some of the MacBooks. These uh, folios, which is more utilitarian on the iPad with the pencil slot, I would say. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I had to give up. I I always try and keep my devices kind of as pristine as possible. But with the Magic Keyboard, I decided that if I'm going to get the best use of this, I just need to treat it as something that's yes. going to live and get get a little bit beaten up. So, yeah, so yeah it's absolutely. probably my least clean Apple device. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else about the iPad before we get to chronicling? Um, I don't know. I think I just enjoy the app ecosystem and the fact that it has a long enough. Not, well, the Macs have great battery life these days too, but you can you can usually rely on it being charged up, and uh, you can choose some really nice apps for pretty much any use case that someone's put a lot of thought into. So I think it's. It's just a really nice place to work, but also kind of enjoy doing stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's my it's definitely my favorite of the, the Apple devices. Yeah, very cool. Something I've discovered as I've uh, incorporated a Mac into some of the stuff I do, because of the Vision Pro, I you know need to get a Mac, you know, because of how nice that is together. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed like just like throughout Mac OS, if you go in the window area. You know, you have the option to move a window to your iPad display. And it's like sidecar being like just like baked into just the windows. You don't have to like go anywhere special. It's like, oh, just move this to the iPad. And it's amazing. Do, yeah, yeah. Do you find yourself doing that with the MacBook at all when you're using Xcode and you have one? Of- yeah, I think the biggest limitation I find with my Mac, so I've got the 13 inch one, which is perfect for kind of travel and stuff. But, um, in a world, particularly given I bought this in the middle of COVID and didn't travel at all, um, I do find the screen size somewhat limiting. So I think the sidecar with the iPad is great. Um, 
I think the extended display on the Vision Pro is amazing, but um, I don't yet have a Vision Pro. But if I did, I think that would be one of my primary uses for it and take my 13-inch Mac, which is powerful enough, but just the screen is a bit too small. Yeah. The thing I discovered the other day with the M4 iPad Pro in Sidecar is that it's got Apple Pencil Hover. And what they do in Sidecar with, so M2 and later, is you can hover the mouse to move the mouse on the Mac around and you can click it. And you can basically fully interact with the Mac, um, especially if you have the little virtual keyboard option Mac OS set up to tap into. So I have it set up now where if I want to, I can just like fully interact with the Mac via the Apple Pencil, which is kind of nifty through Sidecar. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've almost tried to not pay attention to what the new M... <laughs> so try not to spend the money, but that might be tempting. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a reason eventually to to upgrade the toy toy. Eventually, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am holding on to... I have an M1 um, 12.9-inch iPad Pro as well. So I'm holding on to that one nice. to give it more life. But, um, you know, eventually I'll find a reason to upgrade that one too. <laughs> yep. Um, so let's get to chronicling. Was this an app? Like, where did the idea of this app come from? Was it something that you needed a tool like this for yourself? Or was it some other idea that came? Uh, yeah, I think much like a lot of indie apps, it did start as solving my own, uh, I would say problems, solving my own needs. Um, yeah, what I wanted. So I guess it's it's an app that's pretty lightweight and unopinionated that you can use to just track anything you like um, and visualize little charts. And so the the origin for me was a couple of things. It was um, when I was pregnant, I wanted to keep track of baby kicks, which is oh, a pretty yeah. niche use case. Right, um, yeah. But if anyone's ever looked at apps on the app store for pregnancy, they're um, extremely expensive and often not very good on privacy. So um, I didn't want to go to some massive app I only needed a small use for. So at the time, this was pre-chronicling, I just had some shortcuts and I used apps like Datajar and Charty, both of which are excellent, mm-hmm. to set up something myself. And then it was things like I had some close family members who had uh, wanted to th- see things like relationships between symptoms and medications and when was the last time I took something, did that change whether I got this thing and I set up custom shortcuts for that because I, that was the kind of thing I did. Absolutely. <laughs> but I, yeah. but I realized this doesn't scale for everyone. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to come up with something that solved that problem for someone who doesn't want to spend half an hour writing a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the app is a lot chronicling and it could be whatever you want to track. So um, can you go more into like the elevator pitch of what this app is and who else it might be for? Yeah, so I think it's for tracking anything quite simply and quickly. And the primary thing I try and do is integrate with as many system features as I can. So uh, interactive widgets, um, shortcuts, I guess the two primary things, Mm -hmm. anything, pretty much anything you can do in the app, you can do via a shortcut. Focus filters, if that's your thing, so you can hide and show categories based on your current focus state. Uh, It's there on the Apple Watch uh, for quick tracking. It's there on Vision Pro. Um, and I have experimented, but not yet released, the idea of having a button that you can hit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that will be there one day. Um, but yeah, the idea of it, the app itself being kind of like a container for you to track things and see them. Um, and you can track that in lots of different ways. You can track it automatically and um, yeah, see relationships between those things. So I think one of the frustrating things I found with trying to keep track of various stuff is if you do it in lots of different apps it's really hard to see whether there's any correlation between like i don't know when i last took this did it went for a run and when i last had that knee problem i've been trying to fix or whatever so the idea of just if there's not a good reason to use another app use one and keep everything together that's what that's the pitch i suppose yeah so if you made a fully immersive vision pro app you could do like the what if thing and snap your fingers when you want to add a (laughs) new thing (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah i have uh, i was i have i've used the vision pro once um so i i guess fair warning to anyone using the app on vision pro that i haven't had ample opportunity to test it myself yeah <laughs> uh, but i think that's true of a lot of developers uh, i think so yet, so uh yeah <laughs> yeah I, yeah it's 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 easy enough to design without uh for um for for certain things you know if you want to get more yeah. in depth with like 
doing 3D charts and seeing how that looks and uh, behaves, that's when you especially want to be testing in device more. Yeah, I think there could be some really cool uses. I think the only Apple in fairness made it very easy if you had a native iPad app to bring that over um, to Vision Pro. There wasn't, I'd say it was a matter of hours to yeah. take the existing iPad app to, to do more. I guess the, the thing I did specifically for Vision Pro was the kind of pop out windows, what, what you'd call a widget on iPhone or iPad, I suppose, yeah. but in space. Um, so that was more work uh, and I guess harder given lack of device but um mm-hmm. but yeah i think it's it was it was really nice to develop for uh using swift ui and being kind of uh ready to adopt the new stuff i, th- I think that's that was a, one of the benefits of being a fairly young app at that point is it was easy to easy to move on yeah so, so all the code and chronicling is is modern so it's swift ui and swift as the back ends for all yeah everything. yeah nice and then I'm curious your own database. Initially, baby kicks. So, like, yes. how does that database grow? What kind of categories do you find most useful to track for your, your own stuff? I guess it's for me. It's mostly well, it's a combination of things. Um, in terms of stuff I track manually, I guess it's lots of health and fitness stuff, um, but also some automation. So I have a, automations around the workouts tracker on the watch, so that can be used to kick off a shortcut also visiting places so uh if you that's another trigger in automations so a lot of this goes on without me really touching it but uh i can keep track of when i last went to certain uh certain places uh there's also things that so you have like an automation like when i arrive at x location or x city track this yeah yeah so if i kind of go to the office or go to a particular gym or whatever it can it can track that and uh see through time whether that's going up or down um whether i'm making good use of my gym membership <laughs> that's awesome yeah um but then also things like fish tank maintenance there probably are apps for this for mm-hmm. example but i don't think i need a whole app i can just keep track of there and yeah the thing i want to show in chronicling is both the totals and the last time you did something is the kind of two primary pieces of information so has it been too long since i changed the filter or whatever that yeah kind of thing. do you also have a category of some emer- some catastrophe has happened in the fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, had to scoop out fish. No, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does the uh, truly automatic um, shortcut stuff work for I've opened this app and I've closed this app for things like reading? Yeah, that's right. So I have um I do that for my I most do most of my reading in Kindle or like the library loan app, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um I like the idea of physical books, but it's uh, often hard to fit in, whereas you can just open an app for a few minutes here yeah. and there. So I, I do track, I, I save the time when I open it in data jar. And then uh, when I close the app, look up that entry, calculate the minutes and save that. So uh, so that's really fun. And it gives me a nice nice history of not just kind of the number of times, but uh, the actual amount of time I've spent reading, which is which is something I want to try and do more of nice yeah so to do that time time based tracking with uh that you would need to use data jar to detect you know how much time versus because yeah you'd be able to input there's no there's no shortcuts to say i've started this and i've ended this it's like i've done this right yeah yeah exactly so i, I think it's worth, it's worth noting there are really good time tracking apps out there and, and that isn't this but um, yeah this is my, my kind of personal solution for keeping that information next to other stuff so yeah um so yeah it's it's saving a time in in data jar and then using the close app shortcut to look up that time compare it to the current one and then the chronicling like add event shortcut to to save that is that something you'd want to eventually do in app itself where maybe even one of the widgets you have a i've started this activity and then i've ended this activity to do time versus logging i think it's yeah i think it's interesting um i think with all with all features as this kind of grows it's finding this balance between keeping it simple (laughs) for users who want it to be and also giving people who want to do more with it the chance to so uh, i think it's I, i have thought about this um uh similarly uh proper reminders integration um i've seen people do some amazing things with shortcuts where they uh have 
in the name of the group they'd have the time period over which they want to do a thing and then a daily shortcut which runs checks the last time they did it if it's in this window (laughs) create a reminder in reminders and then when that's completed at log it truly amazing things with shortcuts um so yeah i want to be able for the app to be able to support that but i also want to slowly bring in those kind of features for people who don't want to write everything with shortcuts but finding the way to do that right is is the challenge i guess yeah and then i'm curious uh have you thought of the idea of archiving stuff you no longer want to track but still don't want to delete entirely like i'm not like yeah. baby kicks i'm not sure if archiving that versus having it in front of your face all the time makes sense yeah that's that definitely is something i'd like to do um i think you can use the kind of find uh, I'm starting to sound like i'm a little shortcuts <laughs> which i am i'm not gonna lie um the, you could use the the kind of find to create your own export, but I would also like to uh, have that as a native thing to kind of hide things from view. But perhaps if you want to bring things back in in future, uh, there could be examples where it's only relevant for certain periods of time, and you can. So having a hide or an unhide archive and archive yeah. that could that could be cool. And I guess you could also use the groups now to have like abandoned, like an abandoned group, and just put move it to yeah. a group that's not in use and. It, you know, it gets hidden that way. Yeah. Um, so one thing Chronicling excels at are the charts. So outside of these being really beautiful, you mentioned these have also changed your habits with like gym usage and making sure you're doing that. Yeah. So I think this is all Swift charts. Again, there's a fairly new Apple um, Apple API. And so my favorite is the, uh, I call it the dot chart. I guess if you've seen a GitHub contribution graph, which mm-hmm. a lot of people listening to this might have, um, <laughs> that style of kind of heat map uh, for each category and seeing them all together. So um, that's the thing that I was aiming for initially. So it helps me see relationships between stuff if you see the kind of dots ne- next to each other, but also try and avoid if it's something where I don't want to never do it so-called zero day i think in productivity yeah. worlds then it helps me kind of keep those keep those colors ticking over um so yeah that's that's my favorite chart um but there are kind of per category charts and it, i did once find that my my reading chart looked exactly like the icon for the kind of spines of the books in height which i thought was quite funny but um <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Have you seen professional business customers using the app for non-personal things because of this charting ability? Has that been a thing you've heard uh, heard from I users on? I don't know about business. I think it's. I don't have any. So I would only hear about this if people kind of reach out to me. Yeah, I yeah. suppose. Um, so I've not heard of this. I've heard people using it for personal stuff that I wouldn't have envisaged. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, which was, I suppose, the. The idea that it is versatile enough for people to use whatever. So things like when the last time they reached out to a friend. Um, trying oh, to, yeah. Because it's easy to easy for lots of time to pass by and, and um, realizing that that's a kind of important thing to make, keep keep you happy um, or caring for exotic pets, <laughs> lots of stuff. Uh, so, so yeah, it's... Uh, I only yeah I only hear about this if people either post about it or tell me um, so that it, it does respect users' privacy on that. But but yeah, there's de- certainly some cool stuff people do with it. Very cool. And then uh, charting wise, any just wild charts you've seen, or I mean, it all is all just using data. So it's basically <laughs> what's the most uh, used <laughs> used uh, used your app has been where you've seen a chart based on all that data, you know. Um, I don't so I, I don't see the charts, but I do I do get anonymized numbers on scale and I think there are people with dozens to hundreds of categories. So I don't know what they're charting, but they're certainly using it a lot. No, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so there's gonna be some pretty pretty big things going on. <laughs> yeah. And as far as the categories, so um you can do a custom one or choose from the examples within the app. Uh and then one thing I was just curious with the whole, you know, user generating content stuff was like, have you considered a way for users that are very proud of, oh, I thought of the app to do this and having this kind of like gallery of here's, uh, you know, users have shared this with uh, me, the developer, to contribute this to this gallery. Um, it'd probably be a curated thing so people don't submit some 
uh, you know, <laughs> R-rated <laughs> things to yeah. the gallery. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, uh, that's a good idea. I think I definitely want to add a shortcuts gallery so mm-hmm. um, people can see because I think uh, that's a hard thing to discover. I do like the idea of example categories. That was something that um, I got some great feedback from the test flight from someone about adding that page. Um, yeah. I think it really helps get people into the app. Um, so, yeah, I think those are just my <laughs> my ideas. So it would be <laughs> nice to open that to the audience as such. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the shortcut gallery, I think, is brilliant because, yeah, you, you, go, you open shortcuts, you see all the actions, but you're like, okay, what can I... I know I can do a lot with this, but... You know, it really helps to see a visualization and then, you know, being able to tweak a shortcut from from there is a powerful thing as well. Yeah, definitely. And then if you do end up using an example category, you can also still you can still tweak it just like any other um, any other category you create uh, personally. So you can, you know, change the clean the bathroom to clean the upstairs bathroom or, or whatnot, um, which is really nice. So, so as far as like modification to these uh how and what kind of stuff can you change to all these different categories uh so um the everyone can change the the kind of name color and icons the kind of styling choices uh there's also there's a range over which it shows you the chart and calculates the totals and stuff so mm-hmm. by default that's this week um but uh b- behind the premium features is to change that to either daily weekly monthly or the last however many days weeks or months so um uh, that reminds me actually of a i suppose this is a business feature i I had a a farmer get in touch with me who wanted to track things seasonally so um adding the last n months of uh was a feature that came from that request that's very Um, cool so yeah Uh, when you do create a category uh tons of images you can pick from it it seems more than just like emoji images like where where do all these come from yeah, so these are Apple's SF symbols. Um, okay, yeah. And they're pretty much all of them, which, yeah, I think it's 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 interesting because I, I do want to do some more curation of this because every year that library grows massively. Oh, I just and thought so, of one. I, I, there's probably an SF symbol for the iPad and I should have, uh, you know, what did I charge my iPad? <laughs> <Because> sometimes <laughs> yes. I find it dead. It's like, because I've got, you know, I've got some older ones that I still use like, oh, it's been a while. Okay. Yeah, I think it's it. Is this battery getting worse or am I forgetting when I charge <laughs> exactly, it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's the SF Symbols library. There are there are thousands of them at this point, I think. Um, the, the main reason I use it is there are lots of really cool ways you can use them in the system. Things mm-hmm. like the upcoming or perhaps now released controls in iOS 18. Um, so adding, adding images to those at the moment, I think they have to be SF Symbols. Um, yeah. And you can create your own, but the fact there's this huge library of pre-existing ones is is really nice so nice yeah so in ipad os 18 um when that is out you'll be able to add um different categories to control center and i'm guessing when you tap on that it logs it the more to exactly, a widget yeah. okay very cool yeah so that's something that i'm currently working on um and have a beta for so uh that's something that will uh, be there for iOS and iPadOS 18. I think it's a really cool way to interact with. I suppose it, it feels like interactive widgets in a slide overview, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice to have everything very accessible. Um, and the symbol will be exactly the same as the category in the app. So yeah, and I think am I right that the lock screen can be customized per focus mode, right? Yes. Yeah. So, I think so. yeah, so you can swap out the because those will also feed into lock screen. So like on your iPhone or whatever, you can have, when you're starting lock screen, have different things. You can just sit up on the track, which is nice. Yeah, so there's lock screen widgets, which are actually interactive as well. I didn't realize this until um, uh, a few months after uh, iOS 17 came up. But so the chronicling lock screen widgets already are interactive um, and they're, they're the same design as watch complications, which is another one of the nice things about SwiftUI. So... Uh, the the watch complications and lock screen. Okay. Widgets. Oh yeah, widgets are a thing on the lock screen. Yeah. I think, yeah, I was thinking of the the camera button and that stuff feeds into from control Their controls. Yeah, yeah. So right. those are yeah those are different. But okay. Yeah. But yeah, it does both, which is cool. Any other iPadOS eighteen things you're kind of optimizing for? 
Uh, so I'm working on some new icons. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, it does a nice job of the dark mode for glyph only icons, which Chronicling almost is, but because it has a slightly, uh, there's a change in color in the background and a slight gradient, and that seems to be enough to stop it from doing a totally clean job of the, the dark mode. It kind of looks a little washed out. Okay, gotcha. So I have done versions of the, each color icon uh, where the kind of the color is much bolder in the in the main bars of the glyph so so they they're coming also some work on the widgets to make sure they look nicer in tinted mode um i'm not a huge fan of that myself but uh, i want it to work for those who are so so yeah tinting and dark mode for the widgets and the icons is something i'm also working on controls is the the big functional thing uh so for the control center um apis and that'll be yeah as you said the the two buttons on the lock screen are finally customizable um and also in the kind of panel you can pull down for gotcha. the gesture yeah i also have not found a great use of tinting I, the black and white uh can look very nice and i have a couple that are ah, like that. Try that yeah my iphone lock uh home screen is currently just like a little frame around a, a picture kind of thing it's like Oh, I actually understand why people use pictures now because this is actually quite nice. <laughs> so the head can peek through and not have an app icon on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice to whatever. move them around. Yeah, um, small small things that feel like they shouldn't be a big deal. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Yeah. yeah, it's it's so much different though because I used to just have like a bunch of widgets on my home screen. Now it's it's app icons. Like I've just gone back to just oh, app icons. Yeah. Do you like <laughs> the large mode with the no no text? Or... I do. Yeah, I've turned that okay. on. Yeah. Um, I'm not so sure on the iPad quite yet, but on the iPhone, I definitely prefer it that way. Have you uh, like it either way on different devices? Or uh, yeah, I, I tried it. I found that for certain, for like the main apps, I preferred it. But then it, there are some apps that I don't use so frequently, and I'd get just enough confused <laughs> that I decided to switch back to the the labeled small ones. But maybe that's something I get used to. It certainly looks clean. I like it. Yeah, and oh, I was just gonna say. Even in app app library, I actually haven't used app library that much, I guess. If you open like a whole folder of like productivity and finance, they're there too, which that I could see being problematic. Yes. <laughs> of, I've yeah. got these hundreds of apps and what is this one again? Yeah. Yeah. That banking app I have to open once every three months. Which one was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So your app you mentioned can be used in all sorts of ways. But you see it probably more as a tracking app, even though you can get a daily reminder. You should probably use this in conjunction with like a reminding system. So like the three times a day you need to take your medicine, you can actually do that versus uh, trying to do it all through your app, right? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd, proper reminders integration is something I'd like to do, um, especially with um, iPadOS 18 and having reminders and calendar better integrated, I think. Um, that looks really nice. So uh, I think that's increased my interest in adding this to Chronicling. Um, for, my, for my kind of personal use, I try and tie reminders into how I log things so that it all happens in once with, I, I'm starting to sound like a broken With shortcuts. Record, but with shortcuts, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it definitely could do with, with full reminders integration. I think one of the things that people have told me frequently about it is that they appreciate that it's fairly passive. So if you want to use something that's uh, not kind of... Ju <laughs> judgment sounds bad, but it, it doesn't make you feel guilty for having not done something. It's just a way to kind of, in, an, in, a, in a passive way, have this view of how things are going in your life. And so I want to respect that and add reminders in a way that doesn't make people uh, feel kind of... I certainly don't want to do them on by default, for example. Um, so yeah, it's finding a way to keep that balance of uh, not too aggressively dopamine fueled, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, and like the ideal would be if there's a way to like you check off. I took my medicine, and it's linked to that, and it just automatically logs it from so you're in your calendar app, which now has reminders. You just tap that, and it's, it's logged as as well as tracked in the reminders. You know. Yeah, that would be really cool. I'm not sure if that's even possible, though. Um, it might be. I don't know. I think I think you can link events to stuff. But I'm not sure. 
I need to look into yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> does the app need to be foreground as well to like recognize that happened or whatnot and and all that? Yeah. Another um, connection I could see potentially powerful is HealthKit. Have you investigated being able to link certain categories in your app with health categories? Yeah, I have done some some exploration here. It's something that another one of those big features I want to add. I think that the problem is every year Apple bring out these new features with iOS <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. seems to fit perfectly. It was interactive widgets last year, it's controls and stuff this year. So um, all these all these bit kind of historic ones end up falling down the list. But um, but yeah, I definitely think HealthKit's probably the first thing I'd like to to look at just because it's um, it's one of the more common uses and people want to have that background tracking of mm-hmm. of things that uh the health app's so good at kind of scooping up all sorts of information so having that available would be really cool <laughs> yeah the uh the vitals feature has been interesting just to monitor from time to time it's like oh yeah i did not get much sleep that night oh i, I got normal <laughs> amounts <laughs> yeah yeah i really like it i think it's um it's one of my favorite features of the new watch os um yeah, I added um, the sleep um, little icon thing to my stack on my watch. And it's funny now that it does like nap tracking and stuff. I'm getting some bonus time, I think. <laughs> that, uh, it's like, okay, I got that. Sure, I got that much sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Today? Yeah, yeah. I think whenever you have small children, sleep becomes a bit of a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> challenge so yeah it knowing can. quite how bad things can be yeah so, it, it yeah. definitely can yeah so another linking thing i could think of is a lot of people have roombas and that kind of stuff does Roomba have any api like is there any way to automatically track that as well have you looked in that stuff um i i don't know i do have one um i'm not sure if it has an api it certainly has a, you can kick it off with a shortcut um yeah which i do sometimes because and you can schedule it but yeah i don't know i think it's it's challenging for apps to listen to like web apis i guess but if there's a way that you can keep it within ios then uh then yeah it's something that potentially uh but but yeah i think for me if i did that it would be a shortcut which kicks off your Roomba and says I just did it so yep, yeah yeah um, <laughs> and then it would uh just pull in all the data and just retroactively add it based on yeah. that one one time pull versus a monitor yeah yeah and you do integrate with Apple Journal which I'm angry is not on the iPad this year what's Apple doing over there um <laughs> Uh, how does this work? Like, will you you just see prompts based on what you did that day? Does it consolidate these into a single prompt, or do you have multiple prompts within the journal? Yeah, so it's um, it's kind of an odd. I was very excited when they announced this because I expected to be able to kind of supply data to it. So mm-hmm. I was hoping to be able to give users their kind of charts and stuff. It's kind of the other way around in practice. So apps can hook into system provided, um, or mostly system provided prompts um the way that i'm currently doing this in chronicling is you can kind of have a smart event ad and it will look through your prompts you can choose one you're interested in and it will automatically fill out the time and the notes and you can choose to map particular types to a category so maybe you could map your phone call type of prompt to um you know some kind of chatted to friend or whatever category in chronicling so um developers don't have any control over what that kind of sheet looks like once you ac- open journal that's uh that's all the system uh provided uh, i think that's mainly to protect users privacy the the apps only get exactly what the users choose to show from the prompts um but there are new prompt types coming in ipad os well no sadly not as you said only ios <laughs> for now so there are new prompt types coming in ios 18 so they are developing it a bit but i think sadly uh, it hasn't come to ipad yet yeah, you can't even run the iPhone app on the iPad. Like, I just want my my little physical keyboard to type this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the main thing that they're bringing is some um, like third party media. So if you say listen to your podcasts through a different podcast, oh app, yeah. yeah, you're hopefully nice. going to see that there too. So that could be cool. nice. So what do you find most special about the different platforms? You're on Watch, iPhone, Vision Pro, and the iPad now. 
uh, I guess starting with the watch, I've used the watch so much more since I became a parent. Like I find if I'm trying to remember something, I use reminders as a like jumping off point. So I do a lot. I know a lot of people probably think this is crazy, but I do a lot of Siri dictation in public. So <laughs> if I'm <laughs> wandering around, I will I will quite happily say remind me to I don't know take the bins out when I get home yeah. or whatever it is. And then, so that's that's my, I love using the watch for that. Um, and it's always there and I don't have to get my phone out uh, when I don't want to be distracted by it. Um, so I do that. The phone is then the kind of, I mean, they're so crazy powerful these days. I think it's it's amazing yeah. how much you can do with these uh, little devices. I think my first iPhone was the 3GS um, and it it's amazing to look back and see quite how much it's changed underneath what feels like but it's so incremental, or it just feels like it's the same thing. But the fact there wasn't even an app store initially, and now there is an insane app store. So, yeah, the phone is the main main kind of daily thing, and then the iPad is the is the one where I want to try and do that processing. So, like my reminders inbox then goes to if it's a more of a note, it goes to notes. If it's a kind of projecty idea, it goes to things, mm-hmm. um, and that, and then I'll do pretty much anything else, uh, catching up on emails or uh looking at my photos for the day that kind of thing on the ipad yeah from um yeah on the apple watch this the snoopy face uh my daughters <laughs> yeah. are excited when i'm using that one because she, she knows all about snoopy and uh will play with that face as much as uh, i let her yep. <laughs> yeah i think the toy story face has long been long been popular so <laughs> oh yeah i've not even uh, introduced that one to her um so when you were developing the uh, app was Design wise, the starting point on like iPhone, iPad, and then you scaled down the iPhone. Like, where where did you uh, approach this from? Uh, I started with the iPhone, um, and it uses so the the Watch OS app actually only came in about six months after it was launched because I okay. ended up waiting for Watch OS ten because so much was changing. So the I- iPhone was first. It uses um, a kind of split view API, which makes the iPad app. Uh, kind of naturally follow from the iPhone so Mm -hmm. uh, it's much for the main view of the app it's kind of almost free Um, although there are like that always ends up being a bit tricky uh, with new new iOS updates because it's a it's changing a lot in iPadOS 18 when relate in a tab so yeah implementation details but yeah that's made things a bit of a headache I suppose Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because the the new tab bar which people will be seeing in a lot of different places uh inspired by vision pro yes <laughs> yeah is that thing that the thing they show off from the apple tv app is there any place for that in your your new app for 18 uh yeah so it's actually it's happening to any app that uses tab view um kind of whether you like it oh or like not. it or not okay, so yeah yeah so that's <laughs> it does look cool it really does but it means that there's changes needed to make it work nicely uh, for me at least and yeah. so so yeah that's going to look a bit different um but the the iphone i suppose was the first port of call cool. and then there's the ipad version which also i modified for vision pro and runs via the kind of uh ipad app on apple silicon max um, okay yeah i did consider making a mac version but when they brought i interactive widgets to the mac home screen um Plus, I said home screen, desktop, desktop not an iPad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but when they brought widgets to the desktop and you can run iPad apps on Mac, it felt like I'd still like to do it one day, but there's a lot of yeah. things I'd like to do ahead of that because it's already pretty convenient. The widgets on the Mac desktop have been just amazing. Like uh I I kinda I went from High Sierra to um whatever the last year's OS was. So I jumped to a bunch of stuff. It's like, oh, look at all that stuff in here. The the desktop <laughs> yeah. widgets have been just great because like I'll have, uh, you know, quick triggers to turn on and off the lights or whatever in our room. And um, just it's very handy having all this stuff there. Yeah, I don't think I ever looked at my desktop before, but um, yeah, now I do. <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah I, I have them like on the left side. So they're like peeking out that side and they, you know, can use the windows on the other side of the screen. Um, and it's... That's an, on Vision Pro. It's nice because all very easy to you know look at the temperature and toggle stuff from just the Mac virtual display thing. Okay. Because um, I, I use the um, Mac as a headless MacBook Air 
um, with the Vision Pro. So it's just a little keyboard thing that I can mouse around. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it's a it's a really cool use, and I think the the iPhone mirroring to Mac that's coming this year uh, looks really cool, especially as a developer being able to quickly yes on a real device, but also on your screen, do that kind of iteration is going to be really fun. Yeah, the Mac and its continuity features, I'm just I, I love them; they're amazing. I wish they would have that team learn how to use the iPad as well so I could use my <laughs> iPhone for my iPad and use um, two iPads together. Like I'd love to use uh, the universal control between two iPads, but evidently only the Mac team knows how to do anything like this. <laughs> yeah. I always, I really want an iPad mini every time I, I see one. It feels like uh, a really nice form factor for uh, for kind of I don't know reading yeah. websites or magazines or watching things uh, without having the bigger slightly heavier it's hard to say they're heavy these days but um, yes but yeah, yeah. I, I keep thinking I want an iPad mini um, but when you don't have when you're so used to the displays on uh, the modern iPhones and iPads uh, it seems a big loss to yeah the use. rumors about the OLED one are exciting to me yes <laughs> yeah if that happens this year I might finally finally do it <laughs> yeah and the universal control it amazes me it works with multiple ipads all at the same time so you can be connected to uh. multiple ipads and you can either use you can use sidecar with one and universal control with ipad os on another and it's just it's a wild world where you just have all these things connected to your back in that way it can look like you're running some kind of crazy <laughs> setup in a coffee exactly shop. yeah <laughs> I, i'm curious like the engineers at apple that work on this how crazy their setups must look like they <laughs> Just to see yes. what the limits are of what they can do, yeah. So interactive widgets. Um, I imagine that was a pretty big thing when that was announced. Is that, in your mind, one of the main ways people get data into your app? I imagine so, yeah. I think it is for me. So this wasn't. This is another thing that came out a couple of months after I launched, just before iPadOS 17. And then that's when interactive widgets came out. And it was... It was actually pretty straightforward to add for support for because under the hood they use the same intent that Shortcuts uses and it's going to be a big part of Apple intelligence in the future. Um, so it's really nice to work with and I think hopefully a really nice feature for users to be able to track quickly. I think with any of these types of apps, the kind of first barrier is getting information in. So yeah. how, however you can make that easier for people, um, the better and i think interactive widgets are, are definitely an, an awesome way to to do that do you also have a chart widget for those that want to look at the charts on the ipad in a big kind of format yeah the the um the charts from the kind of events tab so the the kind of heat map chart and the stacked bar chart are both available as large widgets for um for iphone and ipad I, i've considered adding one of the like really big widgets that are iPad yeah. specific with, with yeah, everything. The, the Excel so, widget, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that that could be fun. Yeah. How do you envision Apple Intelligence to um, interact with your app in next year whenever Apple gets around to adding the app intense stuff? Yeah, is it I so I haven't played around with the eighteen point one beta yet. I'm not even sure whether it works in the UK. Um I should check that. Yeah. But, uh, I think you have to trick it in some way or i think i think in the latest beta you can just change your in to english united states english or whatever and it'll uh, work okay but yeah the the app intent stuff nowhere to be found that's i think next year is what they announced probably um yeah i think so i i'm gonna get the terminology wrong so i apologize but i think the the rough idea is they have this kind of schema that you have to map your data types to so if you're talking about a movie or something it needs to look roughly like a movie or a journal entry mm -hmm. and i believe journal entry is one of these types so there might be ways that um i can leverage that in chronicling to make a an event or tracking a thing a tr like a tracking a journal entry so i'll yeah. definitely look into that um and i think the text obviously anywhere in the system that integrates with writing stuff um so mm -hmm. writing stuff in the notes field is going to be uh something that uh, I'd be curious to see whether it will be uh, able to see that. I know I just spoke to whoever and f figure out that that might be what you are writing about. That would be cool. Yeah, that'd be neat. So uh, your app is free to use and try out, and um, some really awesome features just with the free version. But there's also a subscription. 
or there's also lifetime unlock, which I love. You know, you have that option of either or there. What are some of your favorite features tucked away in that unlock? So I think there's, uh, I always wanted the free app to be uh, kind of usable. It's not, it's on its own. Uh, so if it's, yeah, it's not like uh, ad obtrusive, uh, like there's nothing in your way to use it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so if people just want to track up to three things, um, they can. And that's, that's, the, there are certain customizations so that using a different scale, like last however many days, weeks, that's, that's a premium thing. Um, and some of the widgets, so some of the more dense interactive widgets and some of the charts, um, they're premium features. But a lot of things like having account, um, using journal suggestions, uh, using the watch app, those are, those are all part of the, the free app. So it's always a challenge when you're trying to price a thing and you want to <laughs> want to yes. give it a fair price, but you also want to make it sustainable. Like I want to be able to spend time on this and keep making it better for people. So there's, yeah, trying to find that balance where I ask a fair sum and people can use it for what they need to. Yeah. Uh, the group feature is part of the unlock. What are some of the categories you find most helpful putting together? Uh, so for me, I, I mainly use the groups to, to filter um, the kind of combine charts on the mm-hmm. on the events tab so so it's things like seeing anything to do with health together or seeing anything to do with this is going to sound silly but fun so like yeah i want to make sure i'm doing the right fun things and not just scrolling mindlessly so uh when did i last watch a movie when did i last um you know actually go out and spend time with uh, other humans <laughs> yeah <laughs> that kind of thing. so so yeah i think grouping stuff that i'm interested in seeing uh what you know what might be the reason that i uh i don't know i didn't sleep very well or whatever then trying to see those things together is the main way i use it yeah it'd be fun to track uh <laughs> you know um your own sleep and pair that with like other people in your household being sick uh, and <laughs> yeah. the correlation yeah. there would be high yes I think. maybe toddlers yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, as far as focus filters i've not figured out um i've not used focus modes as much. i i I, it's funny i've not used focus modes nearly as much as i should i did the thing early on where i locked in like a hundred focus things so they can't take away from me so we got all these (laughs) placeholders so i've got like x1 (laughs) x2 x3 i've got all these extra ones because i think at some point they fixed the bug where it locks you at a certain number but uh, it's all for not i don't use them that much um have you found a good use for focus filters within your app um, so I use focus filters a lot generally. Mainly I have, so I have like a personal focus that's on by default and then mm-hmm. I have a work one that's scheduled for my work hours um, and then sleep based on the schedule in health and driving. I guess those are the ones I use. Yeah. Um, and I do use it to completely change my home and lock screen kind of as a cue to myself. That, mm-hmm. you know, oh, the sleep is the finished. most useful one. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, great. Yeah, I sometimes get angry. It's like, oh crap, it's time to go to bed, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't always listen to it, but no. I like the reminder that I probably yeah. should sleep. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, in chronicling, I think you can use it to hide particular groups. So, um, I'd like hide my chores when I'm not at the house because mm-hmm. I'm working to do my chores, and I don't want to be reminded that oh, actually, you were meant yeah. to have, like, I don't know, some <laughs> way. So yeah, I think it's. It's not the most obvious use of it, but uh, it's another one of those system things where I like to like to give users the option um, yeah. if they if they want to have it. And it's I think uh, it's not something you see in in many apps, so it's just a, a nice little different thing to offer. Yeah, and then uh, counting is a relatively new feature. Um, what categories do you think benefit the most from this? And have is there a way to count like um, counting for? an entire group versus just a category is that something that you've thought of uh it's not yet but i think the idea of uh having cumulative group things is definitely on there i've had people who want to track say uh different types of exercise so say you run in different ways and you want to see the total time you did it all together so Mm -hmm. having having the way to see that summed up for you is something i want to want to investigate um but the, the yeah the counting was new uh a few months ago i guess earlier this year i think it mainly just gives you a more versatile way to track stuff that has scales without having to log lots of different events because that was kind of the way to do it before it you just log multiple things and um 
just doesn't look as nice. So uh, things like people drinking water or coffee, I use it for coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Um, If I go out and have a really strong coffee, I try and uh, approximate the uh, insane amount of caffeine I've just drunk. Um, So yeah, anything with, uh, I guess, volumes, distances, minutes... Those are the kind of things that um, I'm using it for and I think I've heard of other people doing too. Nice. Yeah, when I was in Italy, um, went to the first time last year, I finally, you know, I forced myself to try some espresso and then I <laughs> tried a cappuccino because I hate coffee in America. It's, it's all rubbish and doesn't taste good to me. Um, I still feel that way coming back. It's like, uh, so I enjoyed it quite a bit over there. It had oh, like... Nice a ton of cappuccinos every day I'd have like, I don't know like three or four a day maybe or something crazy <laughs> totally it, you know <laughs> caffeine it doesn't you know at least here I can have a bunch of whatever um chai tea lattes or in you know caffeinated sodas and it doesn't affect me I can sleep all that stuff and then I come back here and it's like I kind of add the jitters it's like why am I oh I, and I had some headaches I had some caffeine withdrawal, I think, from the lack of cappuccinos. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could still sleep fine over there. I sleep the ground. But, you know, you know, without it, you know, I had a little bit of a headache. So, yeah. Uh, definitely a thing to keep track of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I just got back from Portugal and they have very good espressos too. So, if you go out and say two coffees, please, you're getting kind of <laughs> kind of two shots. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, finally, uh, with shortcuts, uh, we've covered creating new short new data within the app i'm curious what ways have you found useful for the finding actions and editing like existing data have you found any good uses of put, putting that stuff in shortcuts yeah i think the the find actions really powerful it's it's the thing from uh implementing kind of app intents you get that one generated by the system based on its kind of properties so you can use it not just to find stuff but to filter stuff so filter based on a time range or a category or a word in a notes field that kind of thing um so i use it to kind of at the end of the day get uh events for certain categories so if you want to write up a journal of the day and uh, you can use it to just find everything you've tracked and format it nicely and say oh i went to this place had that really good cappuccino <laughs> that kind of thing so yeah. it can be a good nice. summary for your day when you're doing uh it's you know maybe if you're doing i, I use day one to do a kind yeah. of daily journal that kind of thing um you can also use it to if you just want to export everything you could find it make a csv file and put that wherever you like um if you need to share it with uh so i've seen people share stuff with with their doctors if they want to share information about things um so you can use it for that too nice and then anything else about Chronicling we haven't touched on that you'd like to before we wrap it up? Um, no, I think that it's been really thorough conversation. Thank you. Um, I think it's kind of simple on the surface, but hopefully with lots of ways you can use it with the system to, to do cool stuff. So, uh, yeah. And if you can't tell, I, I do love shortcuts. A few years ago, I, I wrote up a few uh, newsletters. So if you want to see some example shortcuts doing slightly crazy things, then uh, I've got links to those somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, yeah, thank you so much for your time today. It's been great learning more about this app and um, I'm brainstorming on different ways to use it. Uh, you know, I could see a whole group of just like, you know, little, little ones, which, which she do it of tracking different things that she's up to kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I've come, come away with a really good list of feature, feature requests to think about. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, where can people follow you online and learn more about your app? Uh, yeah, so I mostly do Mastodon, so um, Becca Owen at mastodon.social, um, but I've got all my all my links to the extent that I have them on my website, which is beccaiz.online, um, and I occasionally blog. I want to do more of that, but there's yes. a bit there's a bit there, and that's got links to where where I am. Well, awesome! Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, that's my interview with Rebecca. My thanks to Rebecca for her time recording. My thanks to you for your time and attention tuning in. Go out and download Chronicling right now in the App Store to give this awesome app a try. As a reminder, you can support this podcast and get episodes early by heading over to patreon.com slash epipros or by subscribing in Apple Podcasts. My great thanks to everyone that supports the show. With that, I'll talk to everyone again real soon.